terrorists have seized the baggage claim. Let's go to the action right now. Grab your Stars and Stripes adorned leather jacket and get ready to kick some poser terrorist ass with Target Terror. Released in arcades in 2004, Target Terror is an on-rail shooter that puts you into the steel-tipped shit-kickers of an all-American counter-terrorist operative. Now you can be a real American hero on your trusty Wii console with this latest piece of shovelware from Konami. You know, those guys who brought you real games like Contra and Metal Gear Solid? Well, finally, they could stoop to appeal to the lowest common denominator. Let's rock! We all know that the Wii has become a crazy mishmash of nostalgia and crap. On one side, we have nostalgic trips back in time with games like Punch-Out! and House of the Dead 2 and 3. But on the other side, we get garbage like Ready to Rumble Revolution and the Mad Dog McCree Gunslinger Pack, which is definitely sure to get its own day in the sun from Game Scrap, but that's a story for another day. Target Terror obviously has its roots set in the spirit of mid-90s shooting games such as Area 51 and Maximum Force. Only this time, it's a nostalgia trip nobody really asked for in the first place. Thanks a lot, Konami. Everything from the pre-rendered backgrounds to the grainy full motion video goodness of the enemies and the cutscenes that break up the levels scream happy 1995. I didn't even realize the 90s were ripe for a nostalgia trip yet, but I guess I was wrong. Like any other on-rails shooter, Target Terror goes slim on the story. All you really know is that you're some sort of counter-terrorist that's out to blast away anything in a black jacket or pleather miniskirt. Any semblance of plot is given to you by a plain-looking chick with an overly large mouth via mock newscast with the sound quality of a webcam. Apparently a boom mic wasn't in the budget, and it totally shows. A tanker is under terrorist assault. Let's go live right now. Once you get into the game, you'll blast your way through a hijacked airport, disarm bombs on the Golden Gate Bridge, and deliver justice to a nuclear plant before your final showdown on a surprisingly empty hijacked plane. Of course, not everyone you come across is evil. Along the way, you're going to have to avoid innocent bystanders, such as annoying cell phone lady number 346, innocent nuclear plant schoolgirl number 234, and this guy who apparently wears his shorts to take a crap. Total diaper fetish right there. You'll also have your fair share of rena cops that like to meander around during gunfights like they're on their five minute break. And of course the lone army guy provided to you by the government who can't seem to hit the broadside of a barn. The original arcade game was amusing since your counter-terrorist was armed with a paint gun to tone the violence down. Here on the Wii, however, all bets are off and the violence has been cranked up to 11 and in the ugliest ways possible. The arcade game's paint splatters have been replaced by blood brought to you by MS Paint airbrush effects. Barrels also explode to cover everyone around them in that awesome static fire filter that you can find in any version of Photoshop since Photoshop 7. The normal batch of powered up weapons are all here, like the shotgun and the machine gun for instance. Since you can shoot enemies repeatedly to score combos, it's actually kind of fun to empty a clip from your machine gun into a terrorist's head until it explodes for a 16 hit combo. At least for a little bit. You also have a few zany weapons exclusive to this version of the game, like the flamethrower, ice gun, and lightning gun for the campiest violence this side of Mortal Kombat 3. All of the terrorists you'll encounter are inexplicably white, except for the stereotypical Asian ninjas, that is. Way to go on the political correctness, guys. Terrorists also come in male and female forms. You can tell the chicks are evil because they wear sunglasses and pleather pants. Terrorists that can't afford weapons will attack you with crowbars and chainsaws, while others merely try to hug you, or give you a neck massage. I can't really tell. And yet another nod to other, better shooting games from the 90s, you'll unlock a handful of lame-ass minigames that all mimic other, better games, like Missile Command, Crossbow, and even Golden Tee, for God's sake. Aside from that, though, they're not really worth getting into. While this isn't the most horrible game that I've covered, or that has come out on the Wii for that matter, it still represents everything that was wrong with gaming in the mid-90s. Boring 3D effects, full motion video, and cheesy ass violence. 
The fact that a game that looks like it came out in 1996, then released to arcades in 2004, then ported to a current gen console while still managing to choke on the frame rate like a baby eating jawbreakers is an act of terrorism in itself. And if that isn't enough for you... Oh, fuck me running.